We're delighted to team up with Clean Coast for this year's Coca-Cola Clean Coast Week. Running from the 1st to the 9th of June, the campaign aims to empower and to encourage communities around the country to engage with and to protect our maritime resources, something that's of obvious benefit to all of us. Podgy was talking about it with like the possibility of playing games, like going to the beach, playing a game, bit of a beach clean afterwards, like that's where the GA teams can contribute to the idea of the clean coast stuff in some way. You're just looking at different ways in which you can, but sure you can start by introducing yourself maybe and we'll chat more. Paddy Christie, um, former footballer with Dublin a long, long time ago. Um, primary school teacher, principal now out in Kilcoska National School. I'm a father of two kids and I have two dogs as well. <laughs> Did I mention that? <laughs> How has Ballymun, like Kickhams and the area, like last time, and how has that shaped you, do you think, as a, as a dog? I suppose. In the, you know, from the teaching, geography curriculum talks about a sense of place and a sense of space, you know. And when you grow up somewhere, it gives you an identity, and that's what people really get pulled back to all the time when they're struggling and they're thinking about leaving a sport or leaving a, uh, whatever they're doing. When they have friendships and they're bonded to an area, it makes a difference. And I feel like that with, with, with the area all the time. Because before you go to somewhere, you, want, you need to know where you're coming from first, and I suppose yeah. that's forgotten about. Even if you look at the uh, history in education, the actual history subject, you know, there's question marks over whether it's in the, it's going to be long term or is it in the junior cert or whatever. Like the whole idea of history and, and, and your place is sort of being put in the back burner a little bit. And it's important that people don't forget that, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah. I think those sort of things mean an awful lot when you're in a crunch match or you're under pressure. Um, I think those sort of things, those intangibles count. And How you know, do you instill that in young people like who maybe aren't getting it elsewhere or who. Is it, it, are they getting it elsewhere? Like, I, I don't know, sometimes I think it's a, it's a difficult thing to impress upon a 14 or 15 year old who maybe is looking out, like how to instill a kind of a value in place or create the conditions in which they might instill within themselves a value of place. Well, that's, you, you've hit the nail on the head when you create the conditions. That's it, you can't tell somebody to be like that. That's not as simple as, people automatically think teaching or coaching, so, oh, you just tell them to do that and then they just do yeah, it. Yeah. It doesn't work like that. When you think of the great teachers you had, more than likely there were people who allowed something to flourish in the classroom or in relationships with, with pupils. They were able to create the conditions that allowed it to thrive by itself. There's something, you know, inside people and it comes out yeah. naturally yeah. rather than imposing things on people. So I think, you know, to get back to a club scene or a, a, I suppose pupils in schools, how do you create that? Yeah, like how do we move from, because what you're saying is really interesting about behaviours, how do you move from intellectually knowing these things? You know, we don't know not to throw litter. Well, we don't all do it, but like it's 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 happening all around yeah. us. Like everyone knows not to do it, but they're still doing it because it's convenient to buy a coffee cup instead of carrying your own. You know. Yeah. How and for myself as well, like how to create behavioural change, not mm. not how to intellectually understand what changes are needed. You know, that's a yeah. How you do that naturally without. Yeah. Because you can do it by hounding them and like pressurising them and that sort yeah. of thing. But that's not, that's a long way from where we are here as well. Pressurising people to doing something they don't want to do. Like again, like there's nobody we'll say from a GA context who are looking at something like this and they're saying, yeah, but you're a course like don't litter or, or dispose of your litter responsibly or whatever the phrases are. And we all know this. Like, but but then we go to a GA pitch and you see after a big game, rubbish all over the place. And I just wonder, like. Why do I do it? And can I look at Wexford Park or Nolan Park or Crow Park? Can I look at them as places that house our games? And I'm not going to defile that by bringing in plastic that's single yeah, use. Yeah. That's gonna ha it has to wash up on some shore somewhere else and say, right, I'm going to try and A, maybe not bring it in. Maybe I'll bring in something, I don't know, like something that's more sustainable in, a, in, a, in itself and bring it away with me instead of like just carelessly thinking that it's somebody else's problem, you know? Yeah. When you see rubbish scattered around the place, automatically, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but it just brings me down a notch. For just sure, feel yeah, straight away yeah. like it's, you're on a downer. During the week, Clean Coast are encouraging communities to go out and get involved in keeping our waterways and our coastlines litter free. Litter is harmful to our marine environment, and we all know this, so it's up to each of us to dispose of our litter responsibly. 
For further information, go to cleancoast.org or livehere, lovehere.org. Gordon Mahagwif. Thank you.